Let's seal the breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time where we take you through the pages of our national dailies. We have great analysis coming your way. Uh, let's start off with the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. Top on the front page of the Daily Independent, INEC ends primaries, opens portal for upload of candidates. That's what you find boldly written on the Daily Independent. And underneath, says no two eligible registrants will be left out. I take that again. Says no eligible registrant will be left out. That's what you find. Court orders FCT minister to swear in chairman and councillors. Underneath that caption, orders Buhari, attorney general of the federation, to defend suit on lopsided appointment 2023. Jonathan tax parties on issue based violence free campaigns. Congratulate Atiku Obi Tunubu, other presidential flag bearers. And Vice President Yemi Osibajo congratulates Tunubu, canvasses support for him. It's very interesting. I mean, that's what democracy is about. Democracy Day, uh, looking at June the 12th, we have a lot to celebrate. That's what the federal government is saying. Niger is soaked in blood. Catholic bishop is quoted. Peter Obi has recognized presidential candidate of Labour Party. That's what INEC has as quoted to say. Interesting. Uh, so Rare wins AAC presidential primary elections. And I haven't really heard a lot about the AAC, you know, in recent time. Uh, Don't worry, you, you, hear, you hear about them some more <laughs> going forward. It I'm sounds sure. like you are mm -hmm. consulting for the AAC. No, no, I'm not. I, I mean, knowing who Shore is, um, now that he has that ticket, you hear more. No, no, no. I'm just saying that prior to this time, oh, yes, yes. we, I, we I haven't really had, you know, there yeah. are no bars. You yeah, can, you that's, can what, that's what I'm saying. Now the bars you're looking for will come. Okay. You know, he, can, he, can't, he can't, if he can't tidy you there, he'll make some bars. All right. Um, uh, let's move on to the nation newspaper with these headlines. Uh, the big one there, Buhari rallies governors for Tinubu ahead of 2023 election. That's on the front page of the nation newspaper. The paper is um, giving... Uh, uh, its preference to the 2023 elections. Of course, um, we don't know who the owner of the newspaper is. Um, a nice picture of uh, President Buhari and uh, Abola Metinubu right there. Uh, yesterday, of course, we got uh, news on Twitter. That's where I first saw it, uh, that Bola Metinubu had paid a visit to President Buhari at the State House in Abuja, and the president was all smiles. Um, Bola Metinubu also was uh, on a visit to see uh, Professor Yemiya Shibajo, and uh, those were the pictures that were really making the rounds last night. Um, so uh, Buhari rallies governors for Tinbo ahead of 2023 elections. Uh, the writers to that story, uh, primary most competitive says president in letter to candidate, and uh, Bagudu, Abdul Razak, Ganduje, Masari, others visit Jagaban. The president had also put out a statement, you know, to the party online i saw it on twitter first a long one calling on them to now move forward they want to move forward and yesterday of course um we had some candidates writing aspirants writing to uh, uh Tinubu to congratulate him uh we had uh ahmed lawan releasing a statement uh former transportation minister uh rotimi chibika meichi also writing a letter to um uh Tinubu, a copy of which was sent to the press and uh, uh later people people were saying ah when is the vice president going to also congratulate Tirubu? Finally, he released a statement that was also shared online. And so it seems the party is, is moving forward. More headlines from the Nation newspaper. AKC 2022 APC Grand Rally for Tuesday. Uh, Buhari Tinubu expected. Federal government links over church attack to Iswap, manhunt for assailants. 83-year-old joins race for Alafi throne. Uh, 140 suspected Yahoo boys arrested in two Lagos hotels. Uh, right, uh, that's a, an interesting one. Oshibajo Ayade Amechi Umahi pledge support. Uh, this is uh, still concerning the APC and its presidential candidate. Uh, Friday deadline for parties to submit candidates lists. Friday deadline for candidates to submit uh, for parties to submit candidates lists. More from the nation. 
June 13 is Democracy Day holiday. June 13 is Democracy Day holiday. Uh, that's because, of course, uh, today, Friday being June 10, Saturday, June 11, and Sunday, June 12, uh, the usual thing is that uh, the first working day, if the holiday falls on a weekend, will be marked as a holiday for uh, workers. So June 13, uh, another opportunity for workers in this country to stay, I, I will be to at, stay work. at home. I will be at work on yeah. June 13. We, we have so many holidays. No, I, I'm saying that I will be at work on June 13. You I need know. to acknowledge that. All right. All right. That's so good. there's no holiday. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Mercy. Uh, Naramali tied to visa card fraud um, and Ladoja is to be installed uh, Otun Olubadon today and Makinde is a Hiti PDP campaign chief, uh, some of the headlines on the front page of the nation. We move away from the nation newspaper this morning. Uh, let's quickly look at the Nigerian Tribune. A swap behind a war church massacre, federal government is quoted to say it's boldly written, you won't say that's the bold caption. Underneath, a Fanny Ferry visits a war, condemns Akeri Dolu on Amoteku. Not going back on anti-open grazing law. Okay, Dulu is quoted on that. And you find we are vindicated by federal government's confession. Fanny who's saying all of that. It's time for Nigerians to move around with arms or hanese. It's good to say. I haven't really thought that that's actually a great idea, especially if you follow, you know, the, the, the trajectory in the developed climes. Uh, usually, that's always, you know, a pattern for us. We like to make all of the comparisons. You, you, you'll find that that the major issue right now for the United States is that uh, gun control is a conversation. They're hoping that you have lawmakers, uh, you know, abiding or uh, considering the issue of gun control. I don't know how that will pan out for us, but do we need to, do we have a right to life? Should we defend ourselves? It's also another question that you should ask. Kaduna government confirms killing of 32 villagers, denies reports terrorists flying helicopter. Hmm. Alafin's tour, uh, you find Agun Loye, royal family submits list of 48 contenders to head of uh, the prince. 12,000 hectares of land for aviation city. Sirica gets certificate of occupancy. And that's what you find. Chunobu APC Northern Governors meet. VP slot tops this caution. Eight names touted as possible running mate. A candidate uh, project, a demo is quoted to say. His campaign must be inclusive. Dume is quoted. Jonathan. Amechi Lalon Akasai congratulates him. First badge of Meduguri pilgrims leave for Saudi Arabia and bandits kidnap 80 villagers in Katsina. And also strike courts declares Kaduna Commission of Inquiry unconstitutional. Angry youths in Lagos born over 20 motorcycles over pedestrians' death. I mean, it was part of our top trending. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to take that particular one. INEC solicits NAF's support to elite electoral materials and personnel. These are the headlines this morning on the Nigerian Tribune. All right. Uh, the, the next up is the Punch in the paper. The paper has uh, quite a, uh, a wide array of headlines on its front page this morning. And uh, choosing to go political with its uh, lead story. And of course, 2023 is what's on everybody's lips, uh, whilst uh, other papers have you know, given their lead story as far as 2023 uh, is concerned to the All Progressives Congress. Uh, the punch is uh, going with the PDP and uh, the, uh, the process uh, for the selection of uh, a running mate for uh, its presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. And this is the, the headline, the lead story there, uh, with the kicker, Atiku's running mate, and uh, the headline, PDP raises panels, WK Okoa lobby for VP slot. Riders to that, uh, Atiku meets ex-governors, NWC, BOT, members intensify search for VP. Uh, submit presidential governorship candidates' names, running mates, INEC uh, tells parties. And um, uh, the, the, the gist of this particular one is that Tito Okoa has been the, uh, uh, the 
loyal um, uh, follower and supporter of Atiku throughout the process. And the paper is highlighting that, also highlighting the fact that um, some people in the party uh, uh, you're trying to lobby um, Atiku, who is the candidate, to say, hey, Wiki has also been a strong force in this party. Um, you look at the, uh, uh, the role played by Wiki in stabilizing the PDP after they lost the 2015 general election. So the paper is also you know, re reporting that people are telling these things to Atiku, saying this man steadied the ship of the PDP, uh, midwife the process to get a national executive committee of the, of the party on board, led by Uche Secondus. And he's also been able to um, uh, support state chapters of the party where the party is not the ruling party. He's been able to support the state chapters. You can messy, you know, you know very well much what's been going on in Cross River State. And uh, following the move of the, uh, the state government from or the governor from uh, the PDP to the APC, the APC in that state has no access anymore to state funds. Um, so WK has, for instance, in, in Cross River State, supported the PDP there. Though, you know, some people who, are, who know will tell you that he has an interest in who becomes the candidate of the PDP. He's interested in uh, Sandy Ono, uh, uh, legislator, becoming uh, the... The caterpillar, the, you mean? Yes, and indeed, uh, that is what we see playing out. So uh, these are the things that uh, are working in, in WK's favor. Uh, but the paper is also reporting that um, Okoa's uh, name has been one of one of those in the lead. You have others as well. The the overwhelming um, uh, suspicion is that uh, the South South is 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 in the lead as far as the race um, for who becomes Atiku's running mate is concerned. But the um, the clamors, the the cries, the the uh, the case, let me call it that, of uh, South East cannot be ignored. So these are some of uh, the dynamics at play? Well, well, it's very important. I mean, uh, you know, the position of the... Okay, I'd, I'd definitely just let you get through to... All right. The uh, we, we, have, we have more headlines on the front page of the, uh, the nation. Um, at the top of that front page, uh, the headline, Nigerians beat CBN restrictions, uh, trade 78 billion naira Bitcoin in three months. Uh, that's interesting to see. Uh, Nigerians beat CBN restrictions, uh, trade 78 billion naira Bitcoin in three months. The interesting thing is that some people who are part of those saying, hey, they don't trade Bitcoin out themselves, also <laughs> doing that, I don't know. So who are we deceiving more? Uh, our massacre experts tackle federal government over insecurity. Government blames Iswa. Traders sh shut Lagos market, youth storm TBS for voter registration, the youth vote program going on at TBS with Turk. Uh, you know, concerts and, you know, comedians and all that. Yeah, it's been a mammoth crowd messy at TBS over the past few days. Uh, NNPC makes 1.7 trillion naira from crude sales in 12 months. Uh, that's another one. Tinubu pays surprise visit to a Shibajo Buhari hosts APC presidential candidate. Olubado elevates Ladoja, uh, Kola Daisi, others today. 97 local governments record suspected Loss of fever cases, casualties rise. Police to deploy 17,374 for a Kitty governorship poll. Months after punch investigation, court slams Nigerian army. Uh, 200 million naira damages for killing Imo businessman. Lagos mob burns 30 Okada's beats motorcyclists for killing pedestrian. And the cultists kill Lagos trader in sister's presence. Family slams, please. Really sad one. All right. Um, uh, quite interesting stories right there. And um, whilst we're waiting for our guests to join us, um, we'll just uh, go over some of these stories again uh, with some analysis. Merci. Uh, the, the incidences of um, deaths arising from uh, uh, Okada riders, either they hitting someone or they lynching someone, or someone hitting on a cutter rider and then they go into us and they sit and start burning things. Uh, it's become a, a worrisome one, wouldn't you say? I would say that, um, I mean, it, it feels like we're in, we're in a state of uh, restlessness and a lot of confusion. It feels like we've gotten back to the point of anarchy and lawlessness. And this is, should not be the case because you have a reason why government exists. But if you look at you know the policy and uh, 
if you look at everything that's going on, the government has been very bent on the ban of Okada riders or Okada itself because, I mean, an Okada would not ride itself without a rider, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, I mean, <laughs> uh, that's a funny you, one, yeah. But, yeah, of course, yeah. light or not. So, um, Sad, if you look at the argument, because it's important that you be logical in all of this, so you go to this other side and you go to this other side of the divide, uh, what's the excuse uh, of the government banning this, you know, the Okadas from plying our roads? Security reason is number one that they have actually, you know, put out. On the other hand, you also have uh, the Okada riders saying um, that, you know, this is a means of survivor for us. It's a means of livelihood. A lot of persons do not have jobs. I mean, we live in an economy where um, it's so difficult. You want to look at the statistics on unemployment rate and you want to begin to uh, consider the, the reality, okay? So uh, it, it's something that usually, like we always say, that policies, uh, government policies should reflect the interest of the people. But this particular policy, the question is, does it reflect the interest of the people? For every other time you have government having a policy, it's supposed to be uh, in the interest of the people. So uh, you say you want to ban the importation of rice, uh, but you know there's a need for rice consumption in your country. You want to ban uh, Okada riders, but you know that there's a means of, trans there's a need for transportation. I mean, people are in need for moving from one point to the other. And everybody does not live on the road. So you, you, you have a way where the city is constructed. You have the feeder roads. The feeder roads are the roads that would feed, you know, to the main road. I mean, so you have, you know, like the, the highway, the normal roads, right? So how do people move, you know, from that point to this point? So there's a, there's a problem. There's an issue of transportation. There's a need for people to move from one spot to the other. And some people have identified, you know, the particular need and see a reason to key into it. Right. So how do you solve the problem? So there's a need. As much as you say we want to encourage local consumption, I mean, want to encourage uh, local consumption of rice, and you're saying for us, to, you know, to encourage that, we need to ban the importation of local rice into the country. But the next question would be, if you ban the importation, what are the measures that you've put in place to ensure that um, there's efficiency, that those who are producing locally are able to meet the demands and the need of the people? So as much as you say that, hey, security consents, top on the list, we understand that's very valid because it's your responsibility to protect lives and property. And so on the other hand, you have said, you see, we see this person as a threat. And so we say, let's ban Okada because ban the riders or the Okada. <laughs> it's one and the same. Okay? So you say um, we, we're going to ban the riders because they constitute a mm -hmm. threat mm -hmm. to national or the state, mm -hmm. you know, security. But there's a need for movement. There's a need for people to move from one point to the other. So what do we Have do? you been able to solve that particular need? Mm -hmm. So th that's yeah, where lies like, the question. Um, you know, it's almost like a one step for two steps back a situation where Lagos State in particular had banned this thing. You know, it, it was it was history. How did Lagos get back from the time of Fashola? How did Lagos get back to where it is right now? You know, it shows how government itself comes on board and is not sincere to its own self, is not sincere to its own policies, cannot do what it says it wants to do and goes against what it's it says it wants to do. You know, I mean, the records are there, the reasons that government advanced for you know, restricting the movement of, of, of commercial motorcycles and Lagos are there. You know, so um, government needs to be seen to be progressing, advancing, you know, and, and moving forward. We have to go. Um, let's uh, take a pause, a pause at the juncture to uh, remind us of what happened in, in history today. When we come back, we dive straight into our first major conversation. Stay with us. You ended.